Hi, Steve Arterburn here, and thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. We're in a series on shame, and it'd be a shame if somebody you knew was shamed and you didn't tell them about this little series on YouTube. And they can pull it up there on the New Life YouTube channel, all about shame. Today, I'd just like to talk to you about something that, um, well, uh, it produces shame, and hopefully it produces some healthy shame, some people call that guilt, that would initiate or cause us to literally change our life. I'm talking about pornography, and I have two resources I want to give you. One is understanding and loving a person with a sexual addiction. Now, not everybody that's got a problem with pornography is an, a sex addict, but everything that applies to the sex addict applies to the person before they're a sex addict. And it keeps you from becoming a sex addict because you, you end the, the progression. The other resource I have is this one. And that's the uh, Life Recovery uh, book Workbook for Sexual Integrity. You work this with a Life Recovery Bible. And if you want one of these, uh, you go to newlife.com or 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now, I don't have a lot of material to present to you because if you are involved in a, a sexual addiction, one of two things. You feel a lot of shame. You feel like you're the, we'll just use guys for, men for an example. You feel like a little boy looking at dirty pictures and you don't know how to stop and it, you just feel ashamed of yourself. Then you get caught. Sometimes you get caught in a humiliating way and you feel more shame. So that's, that's something inside of you that knows there's something better and you really sense the crummy stuff inside and it it needs to get out of there and it's never going to leave until you're brave enough to go to a meeting make a phone call get your act together now there's another response to shame you don't feel it you're so into your relief uh, so into the obsession and compulsion that you don't think it's wrong at all. In fact, you argue that you're not hurting anybody, even though it's an out and out betrayal of the person that you love. Plus, if you're using pornography, it is your most direct link to sex trafficking. 87% of the women that you see in pornography wish they were never ever uh, having their picture taken without their clothes on but somehow they got involved. Maybe they were desperate for money. You say, well, I don't ever pay for it, so I'm not giving them money. Every click has a value. Every click also erodes something in your soul that you don't get back until you enter into recovery. So I would just say this. Um, if you have a problem with pornography, well, first of all, you're not alone. If you're not feeling the impact of it, if you're not feeling the shame of it, you might be out there kind of alone. But if you're feeling it and you come and you talk openly to a counselor or in a men's group or you come to every man's battle, you'll discover that you're not alone. You have a lot of people struggling with you. Second thing is that you're not meant to live in the shame. Either we have shame because somebody has put it on us, uh, they've abused us, maybe they introduced us, to pornography like my grandfather introduced me to me to pornography at age four and uh, continued to the rest of his life maybe uh, maybe that's the situation that you're in but we're not meant to live in the shame that somebody puts on us because they introduce us to something or um, encourage us in a certain way we're also not meant to live in shame when when we can make the change when we can pick up the phone or we can drive to the meeting. I had a guy that at the workshop, he stood up and he said, you know, every day I get up and I raise my hand to God. God, take this sexual addiction away. And every day it just keeps coming back. Here I am, my hands are up to God and it just comes back. I said, you know what? I think you need a ceremony of laying on of hands. He said, really? I go, yes. I said, I think rather than put your hands up to God, you should put your hands on the steering wheel of a car. Lay your hands on that steering wheel. 
turn that key, hit the, the ignition, and then drive yourself to a meeting where other people are struggling like you. Because what you're doing is saying, God, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to admit to anybody I have a problem. So you, in the privacy of my own home, you fix this for me. No. Get those hands on that steering wheel. Drive to that meeting and it could be the beginning of the answer of how God wanted to take it away from you from the very beginning. So it's really important that you know you're not meant to live in this shame. And then the third thing is, when you find some people that are safe, it's very powerful when you open up about your problem, how you started, how you sustained it, and why you're sitting in that group, why you're ready to make a change. Now, if you're still watching this and listening to it, I'm wondering if you or somebody you love needs to go to every man's battle. And if that's the case, you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Or maybe you'd like one of our resources for sexual integrity or loving a person and understanding that person who has a sexual addiction. If you need something, you call us the number 1-800-NEW-LIFE. See you next time.